What is up everyone? Today I'm gonna be sharing five tips that helped me to get more definition in my playing. So let's get right into it. Tip number one, make sure to subscribe to this channel because I'll be posting a lot more videos like this. Now seriously, the tip number one is what I call the muting technique. It basically consists on muting the strings that you're not playing. Let me show you guys what I mean. This is one of the things that really helped me to improve a lot my playing. If you guys are not used to it, are not doing this yet, bear with me and let's check it out. So, it basically consists of two parts. The first part is your right hand, which it consists of muting the strings that you're not playing with some part of your hand. There are a few players that use this part of the hand, there are others that use this one, there are people that use the fingers. I like to do all of the three ways that I've mentioned. It really depends on what I'm playing at the moment. If I'm doing an ascending run like this, I want to make sure that I'm muting all the strings that I'm not playing at the moment. So, for example, I started right here on my D string and as soon as I went to the G string, I started to mute with some part of my hand, right? In this situation, I've used this part right here, okay? And I'm not talking about Paul muting like this. I'm talking about muting like canceling all the noise that this string can produce. So you want to do that in order to not get the strings to keep on buzzing and vibrating while you're playing the other strings. If I don't mute it, you'll see that I get a lot of background noise that really distracts your playing and kind of messes up a little bit. So. You get that background noise that isn't like really nice for playing clean. So I would highly recommend to start muting with your right hand a little bit closer to the bridge, uh, sometimes around here. Try to experiment, okay, and see what you can do. Now the part two consists of your left hand. If you're going like this, for example, I tend to use my index finger, this part right here of my index finger to mute the strings. I'm not pressing the strings, I'm just laying my finger over the strings that I'm not playing. So if you combine both techniques with both hands, you get a much more tight sound. You get rid of all the string noises in your guitar. So you basically have to control the amount of vibration that is it's caused by attacking the strings. This is the tip number one. Tip number two, avoid unnecessary movement. By that, I mean all the movement that you do while you're playing. If you make too much movement on your right hand, you might touch another string and it might cause a little weird noise that we don't want. That might also happen with your picking hand, so make sure to be very controlled. Now, tip number three. Avoid sliding your fingers through the strings. This happens a lot. You probably have heard it before. When we are playing chords and when we are transitioning from one chord to another, you might have heard that little squeaky noise that happens in between chords. So try to pay attention on that. Try to not make these squeaky noises. You can have many different strategies to avoid that. I'll give you a quick example right now where I'm trying to avoid these noises. I'll try to play first doing these squeaky noises and after that I'll play without that. So, let's begin. You know, there are a lot of guys that don't pay attention to this weird noise. So there are a few ways that you could do in this chord progression to play without these sounds. So basically like this. It 
it makes the notes a little bit more clear and you don't have the, this distracting noise in between your chords. So try to apply that. Now tip number four, try to use a fret warp, okay? I know that there are some guys that don't like using it and that's okay, but if you want a really tight sound, especially with playing with high gain, you might want to use something to mute this part of your headstock. Since I have like a, this reverse red headstock, you get a lot of string noise coming from here. So if you want like the ultimate tight sound, you might want to or use a fret warp or use a foam or something like that in the headstock area to prevent the strings from vibrating. I'll try to show you a quick example with the fret warp and without the fret warp. get a weird noise that I don't like. Oh, and I'm not using it on my actual strings. I don't actually like to use like that. I prefer to use the tip number one so I can mute my strings and I just leave it here on the headstock so it kind of does it this job. I use a lot of open strings so I, I really don't like having on my friends. So that's just me you can use the way we want. Okay, so tip number five, use a noise gate. There are many guys that are not using a noise gate properly. They are getting a lot of feedback in between silence parts. Even when playing leads, I like to have a noise gate. So keep in mind to always use a noise gate. If you're doing like very tight rhythm parts, try to use a noise gate with a harder setting. If you're playing leads, try to use with a, a, a more controlled setting, but use a noise gate, try to learn how to use it. It makes a huge difference since we are using high gain amps and we have a lot of buzz, a lot of distortion going on, a lot of compression. So if you can gate the noise or suppress all the noise that you can, just do it, it makes a huge difference. So start to use a noise gate. I'm going to give you an example with and without the noise gate. And for this example, I'm using the archetype Abbasi, but I'm using an external noise gate. I'm using the Presonus Studio One noise gate that comes with Studio One. These are the settings, so you can use if you want. <laughs> Okay, so I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope this was informative. These are a few things that really helped me to improve my playing, play with much more definition. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think about these techniques where you actually apply in a few of them? Let me know if it works for you. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video, make sure to share with your friends, and I'll see you really soon. Ha <laughs> ha!